just made it to the Sterling Range Retreat. I'll be spending one night here before I start the ridge walk. Um, start that tomorrow morning for two days and then I'll do a bit of exploring in the park. And look how beautiful the sunset is. So yeah, that's the goal. Um, fingers crossed I don't get lost or um, hurt up there, but it should be good. Good morning everyone. Um, just got a whisper because people are sleeping. But I'm just having my um, morning coffee and some breakfast and then I'm heading off to do the Stirling Range Ridge Walk. It's a two day walk along the top mountains from Bluff Knoll to Ellen Peak. I think it's about 24 kilometers. I'm hoping to complete it in two days and fingers crossed I don't get lost up there because it's pretty hard terrain to follow and um, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> yeah about the ridge walk. <laughs> um, so as you can see I'm not doing the ridge walk. I did plan on doing it, I had every intention of doing it, but once I actually got out there and got on the terrain and was actually completing the hike, I realised just how hard it is and it's not like I couldn't do it physically, um, just some of the terrain is like straight down on boulders and straight down climbing on rocks. Um, I had 17 kilos on my back so it was very hard and there was a, quite a bit of fear involved with it actually because I took a couple wrong steps and I like slid a little bit and I also got lost about six times and it made me just realize that this probably isn't a hike you should do by yourself. You should probably do it in a group and then go and do it by yourself or do Bluff Knoll to uh, the half of it, do half of it first. So do like the Allen Peak side and then the Bluff Knoll side first. So you can get an idea of the terrain and just do these as short day hikes. Also if I was going to do it and actually vlog it I realised I'd probably have to do it over two and a half days just because it's too hard to try and get the camera out and everything and I was stressing heaps about trying to get to the campsite on time and because I had only given myself enough water for, well, not really, I had given myself five litres of water which should really have lasted me for two and a bit days but because it was so hot I went through three litres of water like that. So I was trying to get to the campsite which had water and I had a realisation that I wasn't going to probably make it there and I also held all the fear that I wasn't going to make it there so I had to make the decision then and there whether I was going to turn back or not and if any of you guys following me on Instagram you would have seen my story about me explaining and the moment I chose to turn back and it wasn't an easy decision for me to make I don't like quitting and I don't like giving up on hikes like this especially I've never given up on a hike no matter how hard it is because I do like challenge myself but with this one it's more of a safety thing for me and it was just safety issues like if I had got lost up there um, it's very hard to get a rescue if I have run out of water you, there's no water source except for that water barrel and um, yeah it's it was just a bit too much for me and I think mentally I had just given up so I made the choice to turn back and go up back to Bluff Knoll and come back down and then spend the rest of my time here exploring the Sterling Ranges which I'm not mad about because the ridge walk's always going to be there and I think I'd much prefer to do it with a buddy because then you can split the weight of your pack a bit um, because my pack was quite heavy even other hikers were like oh you need to pack a bit lighter and I tried to explain to them I can't pack any lighter than what I've got I have everything for one person for survival up here so yeah I did you know I did my best I gave it a shot and that's all I can really take from this experience is to go back and give it another go one day um, hopefully with a group or with at least one person see how it goes um, <laughs> I did have a group of um, guys come down when I was going back up to Bluff Knoll they came down and they saw me and they did offer for me to walk with them so if you, they're probably not 
but if you ever see this thank you to those guys if you had probably got there about an hour earlier I would have been like hell yes but by the time you got there I was just mentally done like I just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore so thank you for that yeah that shows that hikers are very nice and very kind but I just want to quickly say that if you are planning on doing the ridge walk, make sure you are really well prepared. There's a lot of people that go up there without Telstra phones. You will need a Telstra phone in order to make any connection with um, pickup services or, well, safety and emergency services. I had an Optus phone as well, which is my usual coverage phone, but I did buy just like a little cheap one. So you can just buy a cheap Telstra phone and Telstra SIM. I think this cost me about 80 bucks. So get one of those. I also had an emergency beacon device because I have one anyway and it's smart to take them with hiking and I take them everywhere even when I go traveling um, around Australia. Um, make sure you have enough water as well and you know just prepare yourself. I had the GPS and the map and I still got lost so that's telling you just how shit this terrain is. Mind my language but it's shit. <laughs> um, it's just all over the place and you cannot see the trail. There was one part where I was just walking in full bush trying to push everything out of the way and I could not see the trail at all. So just keep that in mind. Don't try attempt this hike if you're not an experienced hiker. And don't think it's going to be easy because it's not. <laughs> so the rest of this video is just going to be me talking about um, and showing you the different ranges and the different mountains you can climb. It was an epic fail, let's just say that much. <laughs> Good morning everyone. So it is currently 10 to 6 um, and I am on top of Mount Tulula. I have to check if that's correct because I don't actually know how you pronounce it. So I got up at 3 o'clock to come and climb this for sunrise. I actually missed sunrise because the hike is a lot harder than what you'd think. It's only a 4 kilometer return hike so I was like oh that's going to be super easy to do and it's not it's essentially just like a steep rock climb like this the whole way up so if you do come and do this peak which i highly recommend because it's probably got the best views of the whole of the sterling ranges that i've done um do prepare yourself probably about two hours or so to get to the top unless you're extremely fit and then you might be able to get up here within the hour but definitely worth it if you do come down to the Sterling Ranges I recommend this one a lot more than Bluff Knoll for sunrise but I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're not an experienced hiker because it is a bit sketchy in some places but the views are just incredible I was hoping to fly my drone and get some good shots but it is a tiny bit windy up here so I don't really want to lose the um the drone <laughs> So I'm going to have to miss that, but yeah, after this I'm going to go have some brekkie, climb down, um, and then I'll move on to the next one. Hopefully I can get, I'm hoping to get two other mountains in today, but it is meant to be about 30 degrees, so it's a bit hot and my legs are killing me for my failed attempt of this stilling um, ridge walk. So we'll see what happens, but I'll try to get a bit of footage while going down to show you just how what the terrain is like of this. Um, but yeah, for now, that's all. <laughs> this is how steep it is to get up, majority of it. And this is the type of terrain you have to climb on, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to do this hike. I'm at the top of Mount Trio. It's one of the shorter walks in the Stirling Ranges um, and it has amazing views as you can tell. Mount Trio is just a quick three and a half K walk return. It took me 45 minutes to get up here and I was going at a 
fairly chilled, slow pace because my legs are killing me from all this hiking I'm doing. There is no shelter at all on this hike, just so you know. Um, but yeah, it's really nice up here. It's And I don't want to overdo it. But this is the walk. It's only a short walk. And I'm pretty sure you climb to the top up there. So yeah, it's a good little short one if you don't want to do the hard walk. But on to the next one. So I'm currently at Tulu, Tulubarup, I think I pronounced that right. This is actually one of my favourite hikes in um, the Stirling Ranges. I've completed it once and it is very hard. It's a lot of um, a lot of rock climbing and rock hopping involved. So I'll see if I can find the old footage from my GoPro um, of it so you guys can see kind of like what it looks like from the top. But it is a, um, it's a short walk but it is very hard and you will have to go on probably all fours to slide down the rocks at one stage because it is pretty hectic and yeah take your time <laughs> getting up and take your time getting down but it is worth it it's got amazing views up there it's one of the ones I think a lot of people miss but it's by far my favorite one in the Sterling Range National Park Then of course we have the famous Bluff Knoll. This is the most popular hike in the Stirling Ranges. It is a six kilometer return hike. Majority of the way up is just steps. So prepare your calves, prepare your thighs. It has amazing views from the top and it's definitely one to add to the list. So that concludes this video. If you want to see any more of my videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and thanks for watching, you're watching Trek with Beck.